please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. A little bit louder. Good morning. Good morning. A little bit louder. Good morning. Good morning. The seat and ran away now. <laughs> um, I thank you. I thank God for bringing me here to come before you to worship together with you and to share the word of God. Allow me uh, to bring some warmest greeting from the Church of the Province of Myanmar. Anglican Church in Bamar, Myanmar, uh, comprising of uh, 70,000 70, church members and, and uh, eight dioceses. They, they send their greetings to you. The given scripture passage today are related to the persecution upon Christians, the cause of the disciples, and mission as sent in by God. I would like to start my sermon based on uh, one of the scripture passages, which reads, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the middle of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. This passage is, in a way, explains the nature and the life of the early church. And particularly, it is very similar to life and ministry of the Anglican Church in Myanmar, the Church of the Province of Myanmar. In fact, this passage is a strong reminder of Jesus to the disciples to prepare for the great persecution they will have to face in the near future. As we know, the life and ministry of Jesus started among the Jews. And then his good news and his church spread among the Gentiles and all over the world. Jesus said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the middle of wolves. Who are the Jew Jewish people in Jesus' time? The majority of the Jews at the time were who rejected Jesus and hate his disciples and hate him because Jesus is for them, enemy for their religion, Judaism, and their nationality as Jews in many ways. It could also apply for Greeks and Gentiles because the gospel of Jesus was fullness to Greeks and to them. For Christians at the time were living among the Jews and Gentiles, who had great hostility upon the follow-up of Jesus Christ. Lives of Christians were threatening as though they were living among the wolves. Likewise, in Myanmar, Obama, 85% of population of the people are not Christians, and the basic concept of their religion, Buddhism, is very different from that of Christianity. On the other hand, Christians in Myanmar are regarded as traitors to the country by religious extremists and extreme Buddhist nationalists because they regarded Christianity as the religion of the British colonies and foreign religions who destroyed the pride, the dignity, and the culture of major ethnic group called Bama. Or Burma, or Myanmar, who controls the country throughout our history in Myanmar. That is why when the country gained the independence from the British, the problem and conflict between ethnic minority, mostly those who are Christians, and the majority people who are Buddhists, started. And it continues up to this day. It also leads the country to have over 70 years long civil war in Myanmar, the longest 
civil war in Myanmar. Therefore, lives of Christians in Myanmar are in danger as though who are living in the middle of wolves like Christians in early days. Since the time onward, the life of the church in Myanmar falling into hands of the different kinds of persecutions in many ways. Here, allow me to share the life and ministry of a priest in Myanmar, which actually also reflects the lives and ministry of all ministers in Myanmar. His name is Reverend So Ribert, who is a parish priest, who have been looking after five congregations in small villages in the very remote areas. To reach um, from a village to another village, he has to walk at least eight, nine, ten hours. The villages are in the mountain areas, and there is no car roads, motorcycles, and so on. Because it is war zone, there have been fighting among the government troops and the you know, ethnic minority, minority troops almost every day. And then the life, is, life for Christianity or Christians in those areas are very difficult. When Reverend Sorry Bert, he travel, he has to be very careful his steps. Because on the way from a village to another, they are full of landmines. They don't know which armed groups set these landmines on the way. Therefore, some church members, people from those areas, including some pastors, a catechist, lost parts of their, their body. Sometimes they lost their lives by these landmines up to this day. On the other hand, they, had to, they have had to avoid the armed groups very carefully. Otherwise, if they were caught by these armed groups, they will be killed or be beaten or they will be forced to serve as human machines to clear the landmines. This is the situation of most Christians in Christianity, Christian minister in most parts of Myanmar, like they are living in the middle, middle of wolves. Reverend Rebert has been serving in that area about 30 years, full of stress, with very low salary. But he never asked his bishops to transfer him to another place, because he knows very well that other places are not different from his place, and they are in the same situation. Likewise, he never asked the church to increase his salary because he knows very well that the church is very poor. Above all, he loves his flock, and he knows very well that God is with him, which he learned from about God is with him, his day-by-day -day experiences. Therefore, the only thing that he need to do is not to run away from that situation, but to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves while facing all these challenges. What is the result, result or cost for him? The result is that his body become very, very weak. And his brain become smaller and smaller, according to the doctor. I don't know what disease is it. It affects his family too. His family is poor, his wife also sick, and his children do not have good education, and their future is lost. But they are very happy when the father, the priest, arrived back from home, from home from his visit from other villages. And it is the most precious time for them. They hug each other very tightly. 
They have meal together and press caught together as much as they can because they know very well that the father, the priest, will have to visit, visit another village tomorrow. This is the general picture of the lives and ministry of uh, ministers and the disciples and Christians in Myanmar. It is really true, especially for Christians in Myanmar, that when Jesus said, Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the middle of wolves. Be you therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Brothers and sisters here, I believe that all Christians, especially ministers, deeply and naturally aware that we are living in the middle of the woods, which is the place sent by our Lord Jesus to serve him, to do his mission by way of being wise as serpents and harmless as doves, without compromising our faith inherited from our forefathers and from our real father who is Abba Father, God. Nevertheless, though we are in that situation, as sheep in the middle of wolves, the church in Myanmar has been growing gradually and areas of the kingdom of God is expanding steadily in Myanmar. Because, because of the civil war, most Christians flew away from Myanmar and came to other country and lived in refugee camps, mostly in Thailand, near by Thai border, which is another new area, like living in the middle of new wolves, 30 or 40 years there. From Myanmar to Thailand, or China, and so on. It is indeed the new mission, missionary area for us. When we ran away, we couldn't bring nothing much because, because of the severe civil war. But we brought with us something, which is our own faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ, with its pure and tested form. Gradually, by way of being wise and serpent and harmless as dove, we have been establishing over 20 parishes in these areas, in Thailand, near Thai border. In very difficult situation, though we are the refugee people in Thailand. That is to say, the kingdom of God is expanding in Thailand too with these suffering people. Now, God sent some of them to USA here to live, in the, to live together with you in the right-oriented society and the culture, which is hostile to the gospel like the wolves, such as liberalism, consumerism, modernism, postmodernism, extreme liberalism. <laughs> when I was in England, uh, I, I went to another place, uh, not one place, there a big meeting. They are, you know, shouting at each other. I asked, what is the meeting? This is to save liberalism from extreme liberalism in England. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> so, my dear brothers and sisters, God has been sending some Christians from Myanmar here to join hands with the faithful American Christians. You, among you, but you are not the wolves. You are the faithful Christians, and you are, in a way, a kind of being persecuted people by these liberalisms and so on, and right-oriented among the right-oriented society. It is too dangerous for Christianity. So, 
God has been sending some Christians from Myanmar here to join hands with the faithful American Christians who live in such above-mentioned society and culture to carry out God's mission to expand his kingdom in USA and all over the world. So let us join hands together. It is indeed, we are like in the middle of wolves, and therefore, let us try to wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Time is too short for us to meet together here because I have to move to another place which may be in the middle of wolves sent by God, I don't know, to do his mission like Le Reverend Saul Rebert, who has chance only one day to live with his family within the month and then have to live and then he have to visit to another place tomorrow. He is sick, he's almost died, but he never quit his job. He never said to me, I want to quit my job. Because we know God is with us. We have a real happiness and real peace in our mind, even though our body is very weak. So you will also have to move to another place after finishing your schools, including Dean Laurie, we don't know, after your time, you will have to move another place. This place may be in the middle of wolves. We don't know. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, like Reverend Sori, Bert, and family, let us hug one another sincerely. Praise together and worship together with all our hearts and mind and spirit when we are together here. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the middle of wolves. Be you, therefore, wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.